Today, the U.S. affiliate of Binance halts direct dollar withdrawals. The trial of Sam bankman fried continues with more testimony from his inner circle. And John Wu of Ava Labs explains what's changed since FTX filed for bankruptcy. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices mixed today with Bitcoin trading close to $28,500. Ether was pretty flat, still trading above $1,500, and Solana jumped more than 3% all as of noon Eastern. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Binance US has cut off US dollar withdrawals. The domestic arm of Binance changed its terms of use on Monday, and it says if a customer wants to withdraw US dollar funds, they have to convert them to stable coins or other digital assets, then withdraw them. Now, this isn't the first time Binance US changed course on USD withdrawals, suspending them back in June in the wake of the SEC's lawsuit against the company. And at the same time, the international business of Binance has stopped accepting new customers in the UK, citing tighter regulations in the region that required it to change up the firm that helps it run financial promotions. Binance said until it finds an approved firm, current UK customers can keep using its existing services, but any new products won't be available to them. Next, the SEC is shutting down a rumor that it approved a spot Bitcoin ETF. The agency posted to X yesterday, writing, careful what you read on the internet, after Cointelegraph erroneously posted that the agency had approved BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. Now that sent Bitcoin prices soaring yesterday. BlackRock later denied the rumor to several news outlets and prices came back down, but speculation continued. Now, there are several deadlines this week for the SEC to approve or deny a spot ETF from several asset managers, but the agency can delay those decisions until January. Last, let's get you another quick update on the trial of Sam Bankman fried We learned more about former FTX engineer Nishad Singh's involvement in political donations, including how SBF would request donations be made in Singh's name. He was apparently pegged as the center-left face of FTX, and according to one signal message, that meant his donations went to things considered woke. Singh told the court he wasn't comfortable being in that position for very long. Singh also spoke about the company's collapse, saying that when customer withdrawals spiked in November of 2022, he was very concerned that might spell doom. He said he also asked to recuse himself from a November 6th meeting set up to discuss how SBF should address the public because he didn't feel comfortable with FTX being called solvent or liquid. Singh is also facing cross-examination from Bankman Freed's legal team. Now, Crypto World also spoke to Jason Alagrante, chief legal officer at Fireblocks, about what comes next for the industry after the trial. And here's what he said. For me, what will hopefully happen with the conclusion of this trial, right, is we will put FTX behind us. Um, and what putting FTX behind us doesn't, it doesn't mean um, seeing Sam Bankman Freed in jail, um, right? And it, it doesn't mean the same for any of his co-conspirators, although that might ultimately be what the administration of justice looks like. When um, this trial does conclude, and that's probably just going to be a, another couple of weeks, we can, um, we can come out of this prepared across multiple fronts to help the public understand that this is a different, uh, this is a different industry with uh, a, a new understanding of what it means to be good corporate citizens, right? And to, to build responsibly. All right, sticking with FTX for our main story. I spoke with John Wu, the president of Ava Labs, about the SBF trial and the impact of the crypto exchange's collapse. I actually spoke with him on the day that FTX filed for bankruptcy in November of last year, and now he explains what's changed in crypto since then. He also weighs in on the latest development with Binance US. Today, we learned that the U.S. unit of Binance halted dollar withdrawals. That's according to its updated terms. Now, the terms page says that if customers want to withdraw U.S. dollars from their accounts, they must first convert dollars to stable coins or other digital assets. In June, we learned Binance U.S. customers would no longer be able to use U.S. dollars to buy crypto on the platform. The crypto exchange blamed the SEC's, quote, unjustified civil claims against its business for the change. What does this all signal to you? Well, I mean, you're on top of the news. This news just came out. It's uh, in the line of a whole bunch of announcements. I think just yesterday, uh, halting UK withdrawals as well. And um, 
it, it's it's one of those things where continuing to sh uh, affects their business it absolutely affects their business. I think volumes now in Binance are down seventy percent. Um, Coinbase volume is down fifty percent, and they're gaining share. So it, it's an incredible situation. I just hope that whatever happens will happen sooner than later because people do need access to their funds. And it certainly will be interesting to continue to monitor what transpires on that end. But on the day FTX filed for bankruptcy back in November of last year, you spoke with me about the widespread impact of the FTX fallout on the industry. You noted that you've seen a situation like this play out in traditional finance with the collapse of Lehman Brothers and that it took a long time for people to get back into the markets. You warned last November that the FTX fallout will play out for some time as well. And now that it has been almost a year, do you think people feel comfortable getting back into the crypto markets or do you think more needs to be done to restore the trust that has been lost following FTX's implosion? So I think you have to answer that with two different audiences. The on-chain analytics, meaning crypto native people who have been in the space for a long time, are very, very strong. Something like 70% of the addresses are now off-chain in cold storage, meaning they're hodling and they're not selling. So the on-chain, the uh, old school crypto native continue to be uh, holding on and are, are more convicted than ever. However, the second group, which is the newer people into the space, they continue to show, uh, call it a lack of enthusiasm. And this is exactly why the exchanges, even like a, buy, uh, like a Coinbase in the US, have volumes still down 50% year over year. And it doesn't seem like the bottom has actually you know, played itself out as of now, at least. Some argue that the FTX trial is a bad look for the barely regulated crypto industry. Over the past few months, we have seen some regulatory advancements here in the U.S. In July, for example, U.S. lawmakers advanced the Fit for the 21st Century Act to establish a crypto framework. More recently, Senator Elizabeth Warren's crypto money laundering bill has been gaining more support on Capitol Hill. But do you think enough was accomplished since the implosion of FTX? Since the implosion of FTX, the good news is it's brought a lot of awareness and there has been a lot of competing uh, bills as well as a lot of discussion on what to do in the space. So from that perspective, it is good. But in the U.S., there is still a lot of uncertainty. Um, what I think has been great since FTX is regulation overseas. In the EU, MECA is a framework that's going to go into effect next summer in 2024. And as an operator of a labs, talking to potential business partners, a lot of uh, developers and enterprises are gearing up to launch um, projects and activity in 2024 because they have more clarity. In Asia, uh, activity with business partners in call it Korea or Japan are really, really moving because again, they have more clarity. So there's a lot of good things happening around the world since the FTX uh, situation in the US. The good news, it's a broad, a broad about awareness. I think we need more uh, certainty still. We're still working on that in the, in the US. Switching gears, the Wall Street Journal reported last week that Hamas militants behind the surprise attacks in Israel earlier this month raised millions in crypto. We also learned that Israeli police have reportedly frozen crypto accounts tied to Hamas, which has been designated a foreign terrorist organization by the U.S. and has been sanctioned by officials. In fact, the Financial Times reported today that more than 100 Binance accounts have been frozen at the request of Israeli law enforcement since the attacks. What does this show you about blockchain technology and the potential to help track this sort of illicit activity? Well, first of all, I'm very happy that bad actors and illicit funds can be stopped from moving. And it, it, again, it, it's actually a good example here where blockchain actually, if used right, can be a tool for law enforcement and for institutions to prevent bad actors. Um, you know, blockchain is pseudonymous. It's not completely anonymous. It's totally uh, traceable because of the provenance of the chain. And when you need to, when that money or funds need to get off into fiat, that's where, um, you know, the data analytics firms can actually help out with the law enforcement that's necessary. And in this case, as you said, at the exchanges is where the uh, change from 
um, call it crypto into fiat was happening and that's where it was stopped. So I hope it's a good um, example for lawmakers to realize that this is a space, you know, there's a lot of bad publicity about um, money being moved around in bad ways, but if used properly, it is actually a tool. Blockchain is a tool um, because of the traceability for uh, law enforcement. So we have spoken about crypto hacks before, but earlier this month, Avalanche Upstart Stars Arena confirmed a, quote, major security breach. The social app was drained of nearly all locked funds as hackers exploited a smart contract that helped secure tokens on the platform. A few days later, Stars Arena posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, that the vast majority of the stolen funds were recovered. But what was your reaction to that breach and what can be done to stop something like this from happening again? So Stars Arena is a, uh, a social uh, finance app that was deployed on Avalanche. Avalanche is a permissionless blockchain. So Avalabs, the team, had no interaction with Stars Arena before they deployed on Avalanche. Um, that's, that's important to note. It's, it's an example of how a lot of developers in this space have great ideas. And clearly the transactions and the user growth in Stars Arena uh, created a lot of, um, call it, um, interest. And there was great activity on chain. However, a lot of these developers probably launch a little bit quicker and they need better, um, call it audits and security on their applications. So I think it's unfortunate. Most important thing, it's unfortunate and the, and the, the money of individuals that was lost. The good news is most of that was recovered. Thank goodness for the individuals, always about the community first. And um, listen, I think going forward, it's another example where a lot of these dApps probably should have uh, slowed down a little bit and focus on the security of the aspects of the DAP. And I think I think in 2024, it would be interesting because these uh, exploits will probably go down 2024 because all the uh, developers I'm talking to, they're exploring AI as a potential large language models in order to do audits better and faster than the normal way. So I'm hoping in 2024, there will be fewer of these uh, DeFi or uh, social fi exploits or any type of exploits in the application world. Now, Wu also provides his Q4 crypto outlook. You'll be able to check out his full interview at cnbc.com slash crypto world. Okay, that's all for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.